everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Dance Talk Realness, a podcast where we discuss all nuances concerning education and dance, because the dance experience is an experience worth talking about. Today, we will be continuing with answering um, questions from one of our listeners. Um, so before we jump into all of that, our quote for the day is from Nick Fury. I'm just out in these streets with yeah. this quote, y'all. <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, I'd say sorry, but I'm not. Uh, yeah. All right, so from Nick Fury, <laughs> you never know. You hope for the best, then make do with what you get. So, on that note, <laughs> how are you today, Daryl? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. You're gonna have to start picking these quotes <laughs> because clearly, <laughs> I have decided to just delve into the Marvel universe, and we're here now. And that's what, yeah, that, and that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right so um our first question is oh wait there, going first? um you'll go first okay <laughs> did i change this no i did wait okay we're good here we go <laughs> sorry wow i'm tripping not editing this out <laughs> um what are some misconceptions about dancers or the art of dancing that you feel exist Oh my God, there's so many. Um, I think yeah. that people, I think people assume a that uh, dancers did not get any type of degree or any type of education with that to to be a dance teacher or a dancer mm -hmm. or an educator. It's like, oh, you went to school for that? Yeah, I went to school for that, and I'm still paying for that. So, <laughs> ooh, that. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, I think that people assume that dancers have a certain body type. Mm -hmm. uh, I think people assume that dancers can just perform for you at the drop of a hat. And I hate that. I hate when people are like, oh, you're a dancer? Show me something. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like, I'm not at what? work right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> no. Yeah, and I'm just kind of like, and I think my head is, gets just get filled with so many things. I'm just like, well, I don't know what I'm gonna show you. I can show you an undercurve. How about that? Yeah, Boom. that's my like, that's my dance contract. and I'm contracting release. and I'm releasing. Yeah, that's my <laughs> movement for you. How about that? Um, yeah, I think those are some of the main ones that when I tell people that I dance, or they also think that like if I by teaching dance, that I must do that part time. Mm. Cause people are always like, and you do that full time? And I'm like, yeah, I do that full time. <laughs> it's my entire career. It's yeah. my entire, like, uh, yeah. Or especially teaching in, a, at a, in public education, they're like, and so, well, what else do you teach? <laughs> and I'm like, right. nothing. I just I, teach. I, I teach this. I, just, I teach that, that every, all day, full, full schedule. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, oh. Wow, that's really that's really cool. So it's one of those things that no matter who I talk to, it's like, will there ever be a day when I tell somebody that I teach dance that they will say, oh, "Okay, cool, yeah, that's that's awesome," or you know, the other questions won't like follow yeah. afterwards. Yes, um, I co-sign all the ones you just said, <laughs> all of them, every last single one. Yeah. Um, to tag on to the teaching one, <laughs> there seems to be this misconception that, oh, you teach dance, that has to be fun. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's still work, y'all. Like I'm, it's still work. And for some reason people believe that every student will love your class. And I'm like, okay. Full disclosure, I've never really liked the statement that, oh, well, dance is for everyone. Okay. This is what I dislike about it. I believe that everyone should be able to have access, should be accessible, but it's not really for everyone. Everybody don't want it. Right. It's a thing. <laughs> and I've taught enough children, not adults. Adults usually, they, they asked for, they signed up. They kind of right. knew what they were getting into. But I've, I've taught enough children to know that dance is not for everybody. Mm -mm. Like, th this is not it. Now, I am a firm believer that the arts are for everybody. But you kind of just got to find your pocket within it. Right. 
<laughs> and I'm like, dance ain't that pocket for all the people. Right. And like, you don't have to, it's one thing to like enjoy dance, but it's another mm-hmm. thing to like necessarily feel like you have to be doing, doing it. Like I can yes. love to sing. I yes. don't mean I need to go be a singer. Thank you. And, and, th- <laughs> and then there's that. Yeah. That misconception that by default, since I study dance, oh, so you like you you've always performed like you've been on stages and you've traveled and done this i'm like no no i've been i've been teaching (laughs) on purpose (laughs) like yeah and there's that one yeah that i did not go into education on purpose i'm like no this was actually quite intentional like i i meant to this wasn't a oh man all this other stuff isn't working out. Guess I'll go teach dance. It's like, no, I actively have a degree in dance education. Like right. I, I, I wanted to do this thing mm-hmm. for a multitude of reasons. First reason was because I was like, ooh, paycheck every two weeks, health insurance. Yes. 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 But also I'm like, again, back to the idea of everyone should have access. And I'm like, okay, if I can help provide that access to someone who really wants it, Mm-hmm. I would love to. Yeah. But oh my God. Yeah. It's just so much like, uh, I just keep thinking back to like, especially at the high school level that there's just always, always that idea of, oh, it must always be fun. I'm like, I, it, it's still school. Um, from the students also yeah. <laughs> that I'm like, it's still school. I still got to grade you. Like you still have to take assessments. Right. Like I, I still have to have something tangible to look at in order to do what the right. system wants me to do to put in grades for you. Like it's not and, a free for all. Correct. And I think the other thing that is also surprising is, or that surprises some people, parents and students is the fact that this is part of your graduation requirement. Yo, like this is like, your transcript. And like you can take, and like you didn't have to take this. There's so many other arts that you could have taken Ooh, that you didn't, you didn't have to, you didn't, like, that's what I always, that's what I always tell my students, like, the very f- first couple of weeks when it's, when, when they can transfer, I'm just like, listen, this may not be for you. And that's okay. And, and that's okay. I was like, I will still, like, wave at you in the hallway. <laughs> like, you won't hurt my feelings if you're like, you know what, I need to get out of this class. Like, that's fine. Like, I, I definitely understand that that's not, that this isn't mm-hmm. what you want to do. So, um, I think that people always just get really like that misconception of that, that like, um, you know, that this class doesn't count or like, mm-hmm. or that the classes uh, goes towards like their graduation plan requirements. Like they have yeah. to pass this class. <laughs> like man, is, I, like not... my least favorite thing of that misconception is that they will be so bold with it though. Mm-hmm. And I can't tell you how many times I've had students and their parents like, oh, but it's just dance. And I'm like, okay, and they just failed. Yeah. Because it was just dance until you saw that GPA. Right. And now you want to talk to me. I'm like, but this is what I've been trying to tell you is that they need to do X, Y, Z. Like, I gave you I gave you an out at the beginning of the semester on purpose. Yeah. And um, not necessarily dance specific but definitely public school system specific is the misconception that when we are saying, yeah, no, maybe transfer this kid out before this semester really gets going. Like, Mm -hmm. please take them out. That it's not that in most cases that we're trying to say that we want smaller class sizes for us. We can tell when this is not the art for you. Right. And if I know, like, and I've had this before, I think I've shared this before. I had a student who, great visual artist, awesome. And I was like, you shouldn't be in my class. Like, you are miserable in here. You're Mm going to fail because you refuse to do anything. And it's not personal. Like, it's not, you don't have an issue with me. I don't have an issue with you. But you really don't want to do dance. Mm -hmm. You want to draw. Yeah. We need to make this switch. And they would not take that child out my class. They're like, you, and I was told, you just want smaller class size. I was like, first of all, one kid coming out this class is not really going to make too much difference for me, up or down. Yeah. You can trade her with somebody if somebody over there wants to come. And I'm like, it was an easy switch. It was the same class period, same day. Like, 
all they had to do was put that baby in the right class. Mm -hmm. And I could see that. The art teacher could see that. But the system Mm -hmm. did not see it that way. And so kind of just that misconception that we automatically are just trying to, oh, well, I just want a class of 10. And I'm like, actually, I don't like really small classes. Right. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> like, yeah. I need a few yeah. more bodies. We need a little bit more energy. Yeah. But it was just so mind boggling to me that I'm like, y'all really be out here. Number one, thinking all the arts are the same. We're 100% not. Like, you can look at us and clearly see we're not. But yeah. trust us. Like, like you said, we, we went to school. And for those of us who have education background, we off the jump can tell you, hey, no, we can identify when this ain't it. Like, yeah, don't do this to them. This right. is going to be a disservice to everybody involved. Right. So, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. All right. So our next question, I guess I'm answering this one first, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is the hardest part about teaching dance? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, huh. I think hmm, one of the things that I find difficult about teaching dance is how much I love it and being okay with how we just said is kind of not for everybody who's in there or what I get more frequently at the collegiate level is that they like it. It's fun. And I'm like, okay, yeah, to me, yeah, I mean, obviously I like it, I do it. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, I love what I do. Um, right. it, do I have fun doing it? Sometimes, yes. But do I see dance as, oh, this is just something fun to do? I absolutely do not. Um, yeah. I'm like, this is my, in, again, entire career path. Like, it, there's a level of seriousness I have about it mm-hmm. that... In the past, it has been more difficult. I've gotten better. But being able to kind of check my attitude Mm -hmm. towards someone else who doesn't see it the same way and still teaching them to the level that they deserve to be taught. Mm -hmm. Um, I am a proponent that everyone deserves a quality dance education. And so if I have two students, one who definitely wants to pursue a professional career in dance, the other who's like, I'm just here to have a good time this semester. I shouldn't be teaching them differently in the sense of favoring one over the other, giving more information to one over the other within reason, because sometimes it does make sense to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, I shouldn't target the one who isn't as quote unquote serious about it. Mm-hmm. Everyone who's enrolled in my class should have a quality education. And if you want more on top of that, then I'm available to give you more. But in the process of just teaching in general, I shouldn't shortchange someone because they don't feel the way I feel about it. Right. Um, I think another Oh, a difficulty in teaching. I don't know that this is real. Mm, I'm going to say it counts. <laughs> Getting injured. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And learning just how much it is that you demonstrate things versus the ability to talk it out mm-hmm. in such a way that they can comprehend and do exactly what it is that you're asking. Yeah. Um, and I, I have at least twice been that type of injury that I'm like, oh, but I can't dance at all. Mm-hmm. And I have to talk you through this. And both times, it's just, it was horrible. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow. Well, I'm like, I, I realize just how much I rely on myself to show it. Mm-hmm. Because that's so much easier. Right. And I, I would like to say, <laughs> I probably need to work on articulating in such a way that in the event I can't show it to you, I can describe it where you can get it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will say, especially like the way school is going now, I can't be physically in that space making the corrections like I used to. Right. 
And so me having to talk it out is playing a much larger role. So that has been hard. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I think that's the... I don't know. There's probably a whole bunch of other stuff that's also hard about teaching dance, but some of it yeah. I think is just hard about teaching, period, and not necessarily just dance. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely agree with those that you said because I have been injured before, and I don't know. Like, I feel like I've always really worked with students that are. I mean, I can talk them through it, but I think that they. I've, I've had students that kind of have the attitude of what well, I need you to show me or more or more or less like I don't want to do something if you can't do it being mm-hmm. like me as like the teacher can't do it or maybe yeah, that's, yeah. Kind of, that's also kind of like my uh, own personal like um, creed is that I don't want to give something to my students that I know I couldn't I can't physically do you know well, I'd, be, I'd be about that business <laughs> Stay out here teaching switch leaps. <laughs> Every jazz class. Level one jazz switch yeah, leaps. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least the fundamentals. And let me tell you who can no longer do those. <laughs> this lady, because nope. Yeah. Once, like, once I graduated and didn't have to, I was like, I ain't like doing I'm these not. no more. Yeah. 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 I get y'all. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, I definitely. Find, have found that it is so when I was injured I had like a knee I had like some knee problems it really um I don't know I mean I just it just made me worried right like I'm just like oh my gosh like well, how am I doing this you know although when I was teaching in Texas you know there's these dance dance teachers dance team directors They're in their 50s. They're in their 60s. -hmm. I know dang well they are not doing any switch sleeps. They're not doing any, they're not doing any like, like bat ma, ground bat ma. They're not doing that stuff. So I think it, I I hope one day I I get to a point where I have like a student that I can just be like, so-and-so come over here and Mm -hmm. demonstrate this for the class. Um, Yeah. I think kind of along the lines of your first point about what what's difficult is like sharing that passion i have found that like like i have a couple of students that i'm just like i want you to do this after high school like i think that this would be something really good for you and then they just look me straight in the face and they're just like no i don't want to do this and i'm like but you're so good you're so good like why or like or like their parents don't want them to do because I've had that before where like a, a, there's this beautiful day and luckily she is doing dance at Fordham University but I think her parents would have would not have mind if she did something else but really this child needs to be dancing somewhere yeah. for somebody for herself whatever she wants to do it needs to kind of be centered around dance because she is ultra talented and so I'm glad that she made the decision to do that but um I think it's I think it's the how how the kids take it serious I think it's what's been difficult is kind of along the lines of uh, a misconception is that you know teaching at a at a high school having other people take it serious um Mm. but I guess that's more misconception as opposed to difficulty teaching it um yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, I think kind of like definitely um, that idea of <laughs> those babies that you'd be like, but you should do this. Mm-hmm. I, I think that kind of ties into some, it's related in a way to the, when you have some who don't take it as serious, mm-hmm. but then when you have the ones who do, mm-hmm. but they don't have the support. And so it's like, okay, well, as your teacher, yes, I want to support you. I want to push you. I want to do anything I can to help you get there. But I also kind of can't overstep 
<laughs> right. What's your mama and your daddy saying? Right. Um, all I can do is give you the information and mm -hmm. the guidance and help where possible. But a, yeah, quite a few. And it's always so crazy to me um, how hard some of the parents will fight against it. Mm -hmm. And it always blows my mind that idea of, well, you won't be able to have a career in this. Like, what are you going to do? And I'm just like, first, y'all, I'm right here. Yeah. I can literally tell you, besides what I'm doing, a bunch of things that they can do with this. Like, mm -hmm. the misconception that it's either you're going to be living out of a cardboard box and praying for a gig, or right. you need to do something else. Like, it's, it's like, guys, there's a lot they can do with this. Yeah. And if nothing else, I'm like, um, a lot of places you can definitely, if you're not double majoring, you can at least still get some money. Yeah. And be majoring in something else. Yeah. So why would you turn down an opportunity to have a skill set where you can get some money? That's well, stupid. Yeah. But again, they're not my kids. Like, I didn't push them out. So mm -hmm. I have no authority to really push that. Um, I always did though. Um, I'll be yeah. living life. I'm like, well, look, if you need help, let me know. I got yeah. you, but kind of, <laughs> bless you. Thank you. Um, just kind of being able to just let go. Yeah. And like, you know what? I gave you everything I possibly could. Um, I'm just going to have to trust that if you really want this, you'll do what you need to do. If you need my help, you'll let me know, but I can't harp on it. Right. Um, like I look at my own kids and I'm just like, what you going to do with your life? <laughs> <laughs> I think you should maybe look at this. And then I'm like, okay, well you can't do that. It's like, they yeah. need to figure out what they need to do. And I think, I think that's yeah. the part of it that bothers me. It's not necessarily that they, you know, it does bother me that they, talk disparagingly about our craft because I'm like, suck a dick. But yeah. that aside, it's like, okay, but you kind of have to let them grow up and figure these things out. Like, yes, guide them. Yes, offer advice, offer suggestions. I'm not saying don't parent them. Right. But if my kid is telling me like, yeah, but no, I really want to do this. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, all right, so what you need to do to get it done? Go yeah. for it. If it don't work out, then it doesn't work out. That happens in life. Right. And I'm like, this, for high school going on, that's usually, for a lot of them, the first big transition into, oh, but I kind of got to figure my own stuff out. Mm -hmm. And like some of them have, you know, responsibilities that they shouldn't have had prior to, such as life. Yeah. <laughs> but that's one where they get to make the choice. And I'm like, you're taking away that opportunity. Right. To make that and choice. Yeah. That, that's hard from the teaching perspective, especially when we're able to see mm -hmm. that talent and we're able to see that drive. Right. And it's just like, let them be great. Yeah, exactly. You don't know who, you don't know what your child can become, you know, being a, famous choreographer, famous dancer, you know, maybe they start their own company. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, you know, and they're touring all over the world um, because you gave them that support, you know? And I yeah. think that that's, I don't know. And I, and I think maybe it's, it's having grown up, you know, I think I know in the black community, I feel like that's something that, you know, it's like it's easy for families to get behind sports. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, I can get behind you wanting to be a professional athlete. But when it comes to art, I feel like it's less, it's less like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I can get behind that. Like, it's, I feel yeah. like it's the same thing with, with far less risk. You know what I mean? Like, I think mm -hmm. as an athlete, I mean, if the minute – the minute I am injured, I am no longer useful to any team. Mm -hmm. But I think as a dancer, we've all learned that, you know, injury or anything else that could happen to the body, you could still use your knowledge of dance to do it still a, a, a host of other different things. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's just interesting 
um, it's interesting for that, like culturally, I, I feel, from my yeah. own personal experiences, I feel like um, that is not, that is not a way that people push their, their children to towards. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I've had similar experience with that. Um, and I think that ties back to like when we've talked about accessibility before mm-hmm. that it seems as though like sports and stuff like that um, get pushed a lot more in our communities. It ha- you have more access to them Mm -hmm. and also representation. You see a lot more of us in those fields Mm -hmm. than seeing, always seeing like enough representation of us in the arts. Like Mm -hmm. obviously we exist (laughs) um, and people, you know, crazily enough are still making history being the first black of this in all all these different fields. But that still doesn't there there seems to be a point where that disconnects Mm -hmm. and i i know i see it differently because i am an artist i know i see it differently from people who aren't like Mm -hmm. um at pullen and Mm -hmm. like Floyd, like them them kids the k through eight you have been in the arts Mm -hmm. and then come time for high school parents are like okay well done with that you're gonna go over here now mm-hmm. now we're gonna now we're gonna focus on the real work and i'm like first of all yeah you just spent nine years working in these crafts three right. of those years you had an actual concentration let me tell you what you're doing for high school continuing <laughs> you, you I don't I don't care. Watch me not care. You're going to keep this skill going. You're going to use this to get to college. Now, once you get to college, if you so decide, you know what? I don't think I want to do this no more. Yeah. And if you have secured enough money to be all right, not doing it, do what you want. But baby, we don't invest it. And it makes zero sense to me to not. Not. And I think the other thing is, is that if what you were, what you've done for the past, 12 years, 13 years has afforded you money to go to college. What do you think that's going to do when you graduate from college? If you, if you feel like you can make money to do it, to get to college, you know what I mean? Like it just, it just, the, the proof is in the pudding in that, in that regard. Like it, it, obviously there's some lucrativeness. There's some security to it. If you're willing to put in the effort to be great at it. Um, And I think, you know, we talked about that in another episode about, um, you know, how much do people, uh, the, not the effort people put into it, but how willing, the investment Mm -hmm. that parents and students put into, um, put into their craft, so. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Like part of me wants to know, like what are the stats on your likelihood to, be drafted into whatever sport versus um, whatever career path in the arts. But I also don't want to do that math. And so (laughs) (laughs) probably not going to look. But that being said, it it is something that I'm like, I wonder, I'm like, have I just missed that you're more likely to be drafted into the NFL or the NBA or like the MLB? Is that baseball? MLB is baseball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like, is it? Is it? Aren't the chances higher? Because I'm like, from, from what I have seen, you got to be rather epic. Now, fairness, dance is kind of like that, too. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. got to be like, at, at that level, it's like you're not, you're just blowing people out the water. Right. But I don't. Well, but I think there's more avenues that if you aren't blowing people out of the water, I think that. But I think, but I think also, there's some sub- subjectivity to what blowing people out of the water is in dance, is whereas true. in sports it is clear across. If you don't have mm. that, if you don't have this ability, then then you are not fit to 
go pro. Whereas I yeah. think that in dance, there's so many different avenues, you know, myself as a choreographer, I may not want somebody who is like ultra technical. Yeah. Uh, I might want someone who uh, may have a certain look or, or a certain style. Um, and that style to me might be what I want. And, yes. and so therefore I'm giving that person the opportunity to have a career, right? And dance. So it, I think it just depends on, I think there's just more avenues. Yeah. And dance that where like if you're not if you're not this if you're not this technical hip hop dancer but you enjoy hip hop, there's still a place for you mm -hmm. to still have a professional dancer's career. Maybe not maybe not dancing back up for Beyonce or J Lo, but you could still go dance for a another company. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. Because yeah, like you said, the the standard quote quote fingers mm -hmm. <laughs> for someone going into a sport is is just that. Like that's it. You yeah. meet this or pretty much no one's checking for you. Right. Like if I'm going to run track and I run real slow, <laughs> ain't nobody yeah. checking for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> it don't matter. <laughs> how good I am at other things. Yeah. If I'm like, but I want to do track, they gonna be like, but ma'am, you run <laughs> slow. <laughs> yeah. It ain't gonna work. Yeah. But in dance, like we have different avenues. Like even if I'm not going to be in the next production on Broadway, mm -hmm. there's, there's still other options. Right. So that's fair. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm hmm. All right. So our next question is, what is the hardest part about learning how to dance? Um, you start this one. Yeah. Um, I have thoughts. <laughs> the hardest part about learning how to dance. Um, I think what is hard, what, what was hard for me it's sometimes depending on it's like who's in the room right mm -hmm. and like who's around you because sometimes you get into that into your head about you know if you're in a class with people who you feel might be on the same level as you and they're understanding or getting something at a faster pace than you then there is a little bit of anxiety or like worry that um oh well i'm not gonna get that or, or i don't look like i don't look like them doing that um so sometimes you get into your head. Um, I think. Hmm. So, I mean, my background of learning dance has just been really interesting just because a lot of it, which I would say would be like the beginning of my enjoyment of dance was definitely like jazz a little bit of hip hop. Um, I was definitely just going to these rehearsals, watching people do stuff and then going home and like practicing it kind of like a monkey see monkey do kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I'm just like, okay, I'm going to try to mimic that and learn how to do it. So um, I think, and the other thing, and this is going to sound really, really silly. I remember watching the movie Showgirl with Elizabeth Berkley. It's a very <laughs> old movie. Well, it's not very old. I mean, I guess at this point it is old. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> at, the, at this point. At this yes. point, it's an old movie. But I just remember, like, there's a scene where she is, you know, she's this, this starving, like, oh, I want to be the next Showgirl, right? And so there's this scene where she's like watching the routine and all of a sudden she jumps in and she's like, she's like picks it up. Right. And I've always kind of wanted to be that. Like I wanted to be that person that could watch something a couple of times and be like, I got it. It's fine. Yeah. I'm going to be okay. Um, and I actually had that experience one time um, when I was, I was dancing for the WNBA and I think I had, 
I had, I don't know if I had missed the rehearsal or I had missed something and there were some changes to the routine and I was like looking at it and I'm like, okay, I got it. I picked it up. And so I think for some people, that's not always the case. I think yeah. that, that being able to remember those steps and really get the, that choreography down can be difficult for some people. Um, and they just have to go over it and over it and over it before. Um, I will say, fast forward, like nine years later, um, memorizing or like learning um, choreography. Now I'm one of those people that I'm like, you know, I need to see it a couple of times just mm-hmm. so I can I can get it. Um, but yeah, no, I think those are for me. Those are would be my. Uh, like my difficulties in learning dance. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've always been that person who I'm like, nah, show that again. <laughs> I'm like, Mm-mm. I am I, be, a visual learner is not how I usually describe myself, mm-hmm. but with dance, I definitely am like, I, I have to see it, mm-hmm. but I also have to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I definitely have to see it more than once because I'm just like, no, yeah. <laughs> my brain does not compute that way. Um, I think for me, one of the hardest parts of learning is getting out of my own head. Yeah. And I thought that as I gained more knowledge in the field, that that would get better. And it's gotten worse mm. that um, uh, I feel like I had a professor who said this. I don't remember who it was, but it's like, the more you know, the more you realize how much you don't know. Right. And it's just like, <laughs> so am I destined to just forever be stuck in this place of just like, ugh, difficulties? Like I, I always, uh, when I first started, I always worry because I was a latecomer to dance. Uh-huh. So I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in this room with these people who've already been doing this for like decades, some yeah. of them. Yeah. They already know the terminology. I'm playing catch up to taking class now where I'm like, I have degrees in this. I know the terminology. Right. I've taught it. I've performed it. I have choreographed it. I have learned the choreography from others. And yet and still... <laughs> I am always in that place of, okay, but I'm not really sure about this. Uh Oh my God, what do I do? And so it's just kind of that getting out of my own head and getting out of my own way in order to better absorb the information. Uh Um, I, yeah, no, that is like my dominant one because I'd be messing myself up all the time. Another, they, I don't, mm, it's hard, but it shouldn't be, mm-hmm. <laughs> is when you're doing cross. It's dark. Yeah, that's lights. Yeah, I know. I was like, come on, lights. <laughs> that overcast came. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My natural light is lead is like, gone. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I like when you're studying different genres. And the difficulty in both seeing how these things connect Mm -hmm. and finding those points, but also still maintaining their individuality yeah, and not letting things always kind of bleed over. Um, I am guilty of doing that all the time, but I'm also able to step back and realize that I'm like, okay, if I said this is a jazz piece, it shouldn't morph partway through into modern Mm -hmm. like it's this it's this Mm -hmm. thing on the flip of that though i should be able to pull from information from everything i've learned so i guess finding the balance of how do i i guess honor the traditions of the things while also honoring all the information that is in my body in that process. Uh Um, And it could just be something as simple as like movement quality. Uh Um, It doesn't necessarily have to be like, I'm going to blend these styles Uh Um, because as much as I I am here for that and I do it, 
Sometimes mm-hmm. it'd be like, you know what? No, this is this is strictly a modern piece. Like it's mm-hmm. strictly a ballet piece. It yeah. is strictly this thing, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of getting to the point where I actually believe it's okay from the jump <laughs> with like minimal struggle. Um, yeah. Yeah. Definitely getting out of my head is the number one one. The, mm-hmm. Like I just, even the thought of taking a class, I get anxious. And I'm like, you haven't even gotten into the room yet. Like you can't do that. You you know what's happening when you go in. You're not yeah. new. And it's like, no, but I know that this is supposed to do this. And I know that the way my knee is set up, my body ain't going to do that. Right. And it's just like spiral of control. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's fine. It happens. It happens. All right. Um, those are all of our questions. Oh, wow. Yay. I know, right? There was technically like another one, but that's going to be like longer than what we have time for today. Okay. <laughs> so we'll, we'll circle back to that one at a later date. A later date. It'll okay. be fine. Yeah. All right. Well, you have any closing things? Because I don't. Things. Oh. Child, I'm tired. I don't know what's happening in my world right now. <laughs> I am just like, whew. Yeah. You know, I think, um, so these questions kind of were, you know, really around like the, like, dancer credibility, right? Like, it seems mm. like that was kind of the overarching, like, credibility, like, in the outside world and, like, how do we give ourselves credibility? Um, yeah, and I think that that is, especially in this time of COVID, right? Like it seems like, um, you know, I, I will be interested to see how dance, the field of dance, dance teachers, dance artists, dancers, choreographers, like what we do to kind of continue um, doing what we doing what we do and I was gonna say bounce back uh, from this I mean I guess that won't happen until after this is over but I also don't think that it'll take long for us to like bounce back because I think we've been doing what we've been doing for so long that you know we're all itching just to get back into our studios um, or at least get back to like our studios being full because I know some people are in their studios but Mm-hmm. Just with limited numbers. So, um, you know, I, I, for instance, I'm working with on a project and I think I'm going to have to meet up with dancers like in, in a parking lot. And that's going to mm-hmm. be where we kind of go through some things and rehearse. And so it's just, you know, it's, it's, it, it's interesting and it's different and it's new, but I think that, like we said in our last episode, the show, the show must go on. Right. Um, and that's kind of our mentality is that no matter what, um, what, whatever misconceptions or difficulties that we have, we do still have that. Like we have to just kind of keep pressing forward. So, yeah. yeah. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Fine. Yeah. Um, And I think it'll be interesting once we get back into what will become our next version of normal Mm -hmm. um, to just kind of see if and how our answers to some of these questions shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Things to think on. Yeah. All right. Thanks again for joining us here at Dance Talk Realness. Be sure to follow us across all the places where we exist. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Apple Podcasts. Those are all the things. Yes. (laughs) I'm going to get better one day. Probably not. It's cool. It's fine. (laughs) If you have any questions for us, please be sure to leave them in the comments under the YouTube video or the Instagram and Facebook posts. Um, If you have questions for any of our past guests or for us, drop them. We'll do our best to answer them and pass them also on to those guests to have them provide their answers. And we look forward to to continuing to bring you fresh new content. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.